Well, welcome, everyone. As you can see, we have 32 nursing graduates here with us today. So let's give them a round of applause. All right, graduates, you may be seated. I don't want to make you stand too long. <laughs> Maybe now you can understand me a little better. All right, so this is our spring 2021 associate degree nurse pinning ceremony. So welcome to everybody. It's good to see the graduates with their family and friends, to see the people that have supported them over the last two years, because this was quite a tough journey for them. Nursing school is hard enough, but then you add a pandemic to that, and it makes it even more challenging. But you persisted, and you made it. So before we continue, I would like to also thank the graduate, the not the graduates, you guys are the graduates, um, the faculty that are here with us. And I'll have to look around the room to see who's here, but we have Mary Bruni, she is the class advisor. <laughs> Kristen Michaud. <laughs> Megan McCrillis. <laughs> Patricia Creelman. <laughs> Rick Elbeg. Jerry Russell, and Jen Ventura. Oh, and Craig Tony back there. <laughs> we also have with us today uh, our Dean Pat Schmall, and our VP of Academic Affairs, Dr. Jim Keen. And I'd like to thank them for making this a possibility today. Our last two pinnings were virtual due to the pandemic, so this is our first live nurse pinning ceremony in over a year. So, thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce the VP of Academic Affairs, Dr. Jim Keen, to, to a greeting. Good morning. On behalf of the faculty, staff, administration, and our president, it's my pleasure to welcome you this morning to this amazing event. Today we stand as a college community, as a local community, so proud of what our students have accomplished these last years in our nursing program and all the service that they will provide for years to come to our community. Today my comments really are two comments and one last assignment that I'm allowed to give you as the VP of Academic Affairs. But first, for the two points I'd like to make this morning. To our graduates today, I first want to say thank you. I want to thank you for accepting the vocation that you've been called to. You haven't been called to a job. You haven't even been called to a career. You've been called to a vocation which you have decided to accept. One of my favorite authors, Thomas Merton, says, discovering vocation does not mean scrambling towards some prize just beyond our reach, but accepting the treasure of true self that one possesses. Vocations do not come from a voice out there calling me to be something I am not. Rather, it comes from a voice within, calling me to be the person I was meant to be, to fulfill my original self-gift that's been given to me at birth. Today our students, our graduates, have decided to accept their vocation, not based on title, not based on money, but based on giving back, bringing comfort, bringing hope, bringing love, and bringing service with all the academic skills that they've achieved these last few years. The second part of my comment this morning, after thanking you for accepting your vocation, is to view today's pinning ceremony as a license to serve. You have this great skill set now of academics and practical skills that you've learned from your clinical placements, your sim, and all the work you've done in the classroom. But now you go out as one of service, as service leadership. Service in our hospitals, in our healthcare settings, in private practice, and in large institutions. When I was in graduate school, we too were sent out to do internship experiences in a pastoral, pro uh, pastoral counseling program that I was enrolled. And we were not able to select our placement for internships, but rather it was assigned. 
And the day that assignments came out, I had classmates that were going overseas to third world countries. We had classmates that were going to work out in prisons and some exciting work there. And I was assigned to be a pastoral associate, a counselor in a hospital. And the second year students and my colleagues said, oh, sorry, Jim, you pulled the short straw on this one. And I said, what do you mean? A hospital sounds fantastic. They said, well, when you're pastoral care in a hospital, quite honestly, you don't learn too much because half the time when you get to the room, families are there. So you're going to spend more time in the coffee shop than you will actually with patients. So off I went that following year to start my internship experience. And there were two lessons that I learned very quickly. Number one, yes, uh, folks involved in hospitals are able to have guests. But it's amazing to me when the room gets quiet and the families leave, how scared the patient actually becomes, how fear returns. That as a patient is there by themselves in this unfamiliar setting, they're scared of the unknown. They're scared of words they can't understand. They're scared of treatments that they haven't started yet, but they've heard about. They're scared about what this might mean on their journey in life with friends and family and future. That fear is abundant in hospitals when things get quiet. The second thing that I learned very, very quickly is that the people that remove the fear are not really the doctors. It's the nurses and the technicians. It's the people that go in and explain the same diagnosis five times in five different ways to bring hope and understanding. It's the person that holds a hand, that gives a compassionate touch, that speaks about positive things on the way to a treatment, that administers health, hope, and love are the people that invoked healing. And I quickly learned, so quickly learned, the techniques about pastoral counseling from watching the nurses and the other technicians in the hospital as they serve patients. So today, as you go off from Quinsigamond Community College, remember that you bring not only an amazing skill set, but you bring compassion, you bring hope, you bring understanding, you bring knowledge, all that really lend to the healing process. My last comment today is the assignment that I want to give you. And I don't say this uh, metaphorically. I really ask you to do this this evening. To get to where you are today, there were so many people that helped you come and to be able to sit in the chair that you sit before you today in regards to the pinning. There were probably folks along the way in K-12 education that inspired you and drove you to do the best that you could. There were role models in healthcare, inside and outside of your family that potentially inspired you to answer the call to the vocation. For the last few years, you've been mentored by an amazing faculty who in this past year flipped an entire education and curriculum over, figured out new ways to do things, and worked diligently to insist that our students continue. You have a dean that up until recently wrestled to make sure that even this ceremony today happened in person, to advocate on your behalf and to ensure that we could do it, but not only do it, but do it safely. And in making the decisions that we did to open up school, your faculty, your nursing administrators, your dean all said, Jim, this is what we've been training our students to do for years. This is the way in which we work. So you have an amazing faculty, staff, and administration as well. And lastly, but not least, is to thank the family members who for the last few years, one, missed you at family events because of studying and getting ready for NCLEX, and missing from clinical sites, and probably, if I'm guessing, for the last 15 months held your breath thinking, I hope to God you're safe in the clinical sites where we're sending you out to, and the anxiety that your parents, friends, family, relatives had during that point. So you've had a village of people to support you. So here's the assignment. After today's ceremony, go out and celebrate, have those gatherings, enjoy your day together, and enjoy your accomplishments. But before you go to bed and click off your phone for the last time, send one more email. Send an email to the person to thank. Send an email to the person who inspired you. Send an email to the person that helped you get through those rough patches during this difficult program, which nursing programs are quite difficult. Send an email out to the people that helped you get to where you were and achieve that success. Our nursing faculty, staff, and administration do not do this for financial compensation. They do it because they're passionate about their field. They're passionate about healing and their passion about bringing students on and moving through into this amazing profession. So I ask you tonight, and I say seriously, not metaphorically, 
send a few emails before you shut out the light tonight, and thank all the members who helped you get to where you were today. You make us very proud. You will always be part of the QCC family. Congratulations, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Dr. Keene. Now I'd like to bring up our Dean, Pat Schmall. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Great, uh, great inspirational words, Dr. Keene. Thank you. So I'm truly am. Uh, you don't know what this means to me to see, see you here. I said I wasn't going to break up. <clears throat> I was thinking last January I threw you guys a curveball by saying, "Hey guys, you need to upload all your health compliance documents in Castle Branch, right?" And I thought that was the worst thing I was going to do to you in your time at Quincy, besides not answering any parking uh, issues. What, what you guys have gone through, you really are truly the last class because the Nursing 104 in spring never really had clinical, but you're truly the last class that had what we'll call normal clinical in 104, and 105 was going along smoothly and then, you know, bam. Seeing you guys here, what you've, what you've accomplished to be here is incredible. And, and as, uh, you know, Dr. Keene was saying, you know, Professor Boyce, so I got to see all the work that the faculty did behind the scenes. Uh, Jerry Russell with the clinical sites, um, and, and I ref I'm referred to as the uh, bad Pat, and, uh, and Pat Creelman is the good Pat of nursing. You're, you're truly here because of all her hard work. To get you guys sitting here, the, the maneuvering, because I know we disrupted your lives. Looking forward from here, if you could just take the positive energy from this moment and move forward. The, what you're going to be doing as nurses in our community moving forward is truly incredible. Uh, Dr. Keene kind of touched on it. Um, I've heard you know, the stories of the students being out where the family members aren't being allowed to be in the patient's rooms, but as students, you guys are there providing the hope. You, you guys got to see what you were doing, that truly what you're able to do as nurses is, is life-changing and incredible. So I truly am so proud of you guys. I want to thank the faculty because, again, you guys did all the work, but the work that they had to do, I was uh, joking with Professor Bruni, when she signed up to be your class advisor, she's like, oh yeah, I've done this a hundred times, I've done pinnings, piece of cake. Who knew that you, well, all the work she was going to have to do? And your class advisors for pushing to make sure that we had an in-person pinning really, really mattered. So you guys, tremendous work. Now what I want to just say is, you think you're done, so you get a little bit of an NCLEX. I, I, I don't really remember the time from when I got pinned to NCLEX, but it was a period of time, so a little bit more support from the faculty. But I implore you to keep going, right? Keep going. I'm, I wasn't standing up here because I stopped just with my associate degree of nursing. I kept moving, and I want you guys to keep moving. We need to keep you guys moving so that you'll be sitting up here in, in several years to come. So I just want to thank you. I am so proud of you. And also, I want you to be up sitting on the stage as nursing faculty, nursing leaders in the next few years, so keep going. So congratulations, and great job, and I'm so proud of you all. Thank you, Pat. And now I'd like to introduce the class speaker, Pat Creelman. She is the chair of the Nurse Education Program. Hello, everyone. I can't believe I'm looking out at a class sitting in this auditorium having a pinning. It's just such a wonderful thing to see. Before I share my thoughts, a couple of things I want to um, lead with. First of all, um, I'm going to be talking to you about scrapbooking. And I had to check with my daughter this morning to make sure that she knew what scrapbooking was, because she's 33. And for all the guests in the room, your graduates will tell you, sometimes I use examples that maybe might be a little bit dated, okay? When I talk about Parkinson's disease to my students, I'll say, you know, Michael J. Fox. 
And sometimes they look at me because they're not quite sure who Michael J. Fox is, and I'll say, you know, back to the future, which was just yesterday for me. But <laughs> it happened in 1985. And when you think about it, probably more than half the students in this room weren't even alive in 1985. <laughs> so I have to be careful sometimes with my, with my uh, examples that I use. But I decided I would go ahead with my example of scrapbooking because I think it's very appropriate to what we're talking about today. So scrapbooking was a phenomenon that gained popularity probably about 10 years ago. It was begun with two women, and I'm sure many of the parents in the, in the room will remember this. It was begun with two women who started a small business called Creative Memories. And as part of that business, they created workshops, classes, and sold numerous products, each geared, geared towards creating an ideal means of recording and preserving a person or family's cherished history. People made scrapbooks for many reasons. Some viewed it as a hobby. Some viewed it as a family responsibility, while others viewed it as a way to take the past or present and reflect it in the creator's own artistic style for the future. Beautiful presentation pages were made using decorative backgrounds, special photos, and keepsakes and each page was created with a theme as unique as the creator. Scrapbooks were made as a means to chronicle the journey, and most importantly, to be preserved. Although you may not realize it, I would like to suggest to you, the class of 2021, that the creation of your scrapbook has already begun and it started in September of 2019. In my role as Chair of Nurse Education, and in my interactions with the members of this class since then, I have been privileged to witness this process. Many pages of your scrapbook have already been determined, each with its own theme, each page as unique and creative as the individual men and women who have been part of this class. With every challenge and milestone that you have faced during the past two years of nursing education, you, both as individuals and a class, have been adding to the content of these pages. So what are these pages? One of these pages might be entitled Commitment how this page has grown from the time you, along with your family members, made a commitment to your entry into this program. You have been witness to the power of commitment on several levels, and as such, you may choose to develop this page in a multitude of ways. When you entered the program, it was clear that you were clearly committed to your goal of studying to become a nurse. And while you thought you knew what this would require of you, who would have imagined the extent to which this would have been challenged starting in March of 2020, when you and the rest of the world faced the effects of COVID? As you sit here today, be assured that your commitment page has been completed. Let this be the message on your page. Another of your pages might be called Resilience. It has been well documented that completion of a program of studies in nursing is one of the most challenging of academic choices. You added resilience to your pages during an unprecedented global health crisis. Any working nurse can describe to you in great detail how nursing school was one of the most stressful times of their life and most of them didn't have to complete it during a pandemic. Many of you faced the loss of income, homeschooling your children, the uncertainty of your own health, and tragically, even the loss of loved ones. 
You faced all of these while trudging through the sometimes unrelenting demands of nursing school. Many people call 2020 the year of the nurse. I would like to also think of it as the year of the nursing student. Let this be the message on your page. Another of your pages might be entitled Pride. You are a QCC graduate. On this day, I hope you have pride for yourself and everything you have accomplished during your time at Quinsig. There was a time when the thought of being where you are right now might have seemed unattain unattainable, but here you are. One day at a time, sometimes one moment at a time. You have acquired all that is necessary to sit for and pass the NFLEX licensure exam. Know that every single person in this room and many others are so proud of you. Let this be the message on your page. And finally, you must create a page called Joy. Of all of your pages, let this be the most extravagant. Joyful in the completion of this program. Joyful that you are more fully able to return to your loved ones and significant others and joyful that we are nearing the end of this COVID experience. Celebrate joy in the meeting of your commitments, the acknowledgement of your resilience, and the pride that you are feeling today. I invite you to continue to your page of joy as you enter the nursing profession and hope that you continue to find joy in all that you bring to nursing. On behalf of the nursing faculty, I wish you every success as you begin your nursing career. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Now I'd like to introduce Mary Bruni. She is the class advisor. She is going to go over the history of the pinning ceremony. Congratulations to all of you. We are so proud of you. The pinning ceremony is a time-honored nursing school tradition. It is a ceremony that Quinn Sigamond has done for over 60 years. We do it as oftentimes it is personally more meaningful than the graduation ceremony to our nursing students. It signifies an official initiation into the brotherhood and sisterhood of nurses. As of right now, you are joining your faculty and other fellow nurses into the outstanding profession of nursing. You will now be our colleagues. Every piece of this ceremony is rich with symbolism, tradition, and honoring of our profession. The ceremony typically includes the pin, the nurse's pin, the cap, and the lamp. The modern ceremony dates back into the 1860s when Florence Nightingale was awarded the Red Cross of St. George in recognition for her service to the injured during the Crimean War. To share the honor, she in turn presented a Medal of Excellence to her brightest graduates. Twenty years later, in 1880, it, um, in the United States, in the first pin was presented to the graduating class at the Bellevue Hospital of Nursing in New York City. The pin presented to graduates was both beautiful and symbolic much like the beautiful and symbolic pin that you will be receiving today. Designs of nurses' pins have evolved through time 
and many programs have incorporated symbols that reflect concepts that were valued by the educational institute that the nursing program itself had. Quinsigamon Community College opened up their first nursing program in 1960. At that time, a contest was held and the nursing students were invited to create a design for a pin that would best reflect Quinsigamon's history. The design of that pin is still used today and that design um, that you'll be wearing today represents the winner of that contest 60 years ago. The Quinsigamon Community College pin includes an image of a fishing village which honors the Americans who originally settled that land that was known as Quinsigamon, meaning the pickerel fishing place. Included in the pin are the words learning, service, and integrity. These concepts are integral to the philosophy of the nursing program at that time and just as important to the program that we have today. The symbolism of the lamp of nursing is representative of the care of devotion that the nurse administers to the sick and injured in the practice of nursing. Like so much of what nursing is, the lamp currently used in our ceremony is symbolic of that used by Florence Nightingale, who carried a lantern when doing nightly rounds on the four miles of wards at the Barrack Military Hospital during the Crimean War. The soldiers would see her coming with her lamp and they began to recognize her as the lady with the lamp. This diligence that she bestowed resulted in a tremendous respect for her by her patients. And finally, the nurse's cap. Once again was initiated by Florence Nightingale who desired to create a uniform that would bring professionalism to nursing. Part of that uniform was the nurse's cap. The earliest caps were designed after a nun's habit designed to keep the hair neatly in place and present a professional appearance. The nurse's cap has undergone many changes over the past years and has evolved from the very large cap to a very small cap that sits on top of your head, as the ones that we're wearing today. While the nurse's cap is not widely used today in modern nursing, and I dare say very few of you will wear this cap ever again. <laughs> um, the cap still has a very important part of the history of nursing. From the days of Florence Nightingale to the present day capping ceremonies, the pin, the lamp, and the cap are symbolic of your entry into one of the noblest professions of all. Nursing. Nursing. Nursing has changed significantly over the years. The responsibility has increased. The technology has changed. The way we document the care and even the documentations have changed a great deal. Things have not changed. The thing that has not changed is the role nursing has played in society. It is a tremendous honor to serve, to advocate, and care for the patients that entrust in us to care for them and their families. It is a profession that has been ranked the number one profession for altruism, honesty, and trustworthiness. With the impact of COVID and what our society has gone through with the concerns of the pandemic, we have stood out as being one of their heroes. It is this ceremony that is the start of that heroism, that honor, that altruism that we as faculty have prepared you for. We want you to enjoy your day. We want, you to, wish, we want to wish you the best of luck 
as you join us in this wonderful profession, and we want to welcome you as nurses and colleagues into our profession. Thank you, Mary. I don't know who left their glasses up here. Oh, that's okay. That's their <laughs> I'll bring them back in a minute. <laughs> All right, at this time, I'd like to introduce Kristen Michaud. She will do the graduate introductions as you are pinned. First name that we have is Stephanie Langley. Stephanie, would you please come up? <laughs> Stephanie would like to thank her husband without his genuine belief that she was worth more than what she thought herself to be. She would not have accomplished this great milestone. She would also like to thank her babies for loving her unconditionally, even though Mama was always studying for long hours, and her family for their love and support. Stephanie says, I love you all very much. Thank you. Chase Manila. Chase would like to thank his mother, father, and the rest of his family for their endless support. He would also like to thank his boyfriend, Ray, for always putting up with his stress from school. Chase would especially like to thank all of the faculty in the nursing program for giving him the knowledge and experience needed to become a great nurse. Nicole Dion. Nicole would like to thank her whole family, especially her mom, dad, and sisters for always supporting her and believing that she had it in her to pursue her dreams, even when she did not think it was possible. Nicole says, I love you all so much. I couldn't have done it without you, and you mean the world to me. Quadwo Asari Larbi. A huge thank you to my loving family, Mr. and Mrs. Kelvin Adudwum, my two boys, Darian and Lemuel, for all the sacrifices you rendered to help me accomplish my dream of becoming a nurse. To my friends, thank you for the support, inspiration. I love you all. Quad. Hannah Benincasa. <laughs> to my family and friends, along with my fellow classmates and faculty, there is no way to put into words how thankful I am for your unconditional love and support. Nursing school has been one of the most challenging yet rewarding journeys of my life, and I could not have made it through without all of you believing in me. Jessica Bickford. I am beyond grateful for all of the support I received during this program, most notably from my parents and in-laws, who were always available to babysit or make us a meal, my family and friends who constantly cheered for me along the way, my son Brady, and last but certainly not least, my husband Ben, for his constant love, support, and the sacrifices he made to make all this possible. I would not and could not have done this if it weren't for my team. <laughs> Nicole Bonazzoli. 
I would like to thank my loving partner, John, for showing me unconditional love and support, as well as my mother, Linda, and stepfather, Steve. I would also like to thank my friends for enduring the roller coaster of emotions and unwavering support. Thank you. Brianna Boyko. I want to thank my husband, my three daughters, my parents, and my in-laws for their love and support these past four semesters. They believed in me when I wanted to give up and pushed me to see it through, and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. Thank you. <laughs> Jessica Brunel. I want to thank my mom and brother for making my life easier for me while in nursing school. It allowed me to focus on studying and completing my assignments. Thank you. Anna Bergwinner. Thank you to all my professors during my time at Quinn Sig for the endless support and encouragement. Thank you to my family for loving me through this. It was rough on you guys, too. Gianna Carlson. I would like to thank Derek, his mom, and my mom for the continuous support they have given me over the last two years. I could never have done it without your help. Kassara Casey. Thank you to my loving husband and family for supporting and encouraging me throughout nursing school. And a special thank you to my little sister, Kirstiana, my greatest support system and source of comedic relief when I needed it most. I'm glad I had you to go through this with me. <laughs> Jamie Crivello. Thank you to my dad, Lil, Chris, and all my family, friends, and fellow classmates especially you, Sherry. You all believed in me when I didn't believe in myself and somehow put up with me the last two years. Thank you again for never giving up on me because without your support, I wouldn't be here today. Love you all. <laughs> Shana L. Dickieson. It's impossible to express the amount of gratitude I have for my family and friends who have supported me, inspired me, motivated me, and reminded me every time I doubted myself that it is absolutely possible to achieve my dream in becoming a nurse. I want to thank my fiance, Hillary, my mom, Eileen, my sister, Shannon and Sabrina, my father-in-law, Mark, my brother-in-laws, Adam, Dan, and Timmy, and last but not least, my nephews, Lincoln and Landon. I am truly so lucky to have you all in my corner, and I couldn't have done it without you. Adam Y. Zap Zapasu. I want to say a thank you to my amazing family and friends for being there for me through these tough two years. I also want to thank all my nursing faculty and instructors for all their encouragement and support. Last but not least, thank you to my classmates, everyone you made this journey possible. Thank you. <laughs> Kirstiana Fershek. Thank you to my amazing fiance, Matthew, who has been supportive throughout my nursing school journey. Also, thank you to my sister, Cassara, who was by my side the entire time and made it a little less painful. <laughs> a 
Abigail Gagné. Abby would like to thank her boyfriend, family, and friends, but most of all her parents for the constant support and encouragement. They always believed in her and she loves you guys. Lynn Hackett Helms. First, I'd like to thank God for this moment and allowing me to pursue my dreams. This all would not be possible without the support of my family and friends, especially my mom and dad and my loving husband. We made it. Amanda Key Hernandez. I want to thank my family for always believing in me, encouraging me, and supporting me through this journey. My daughters for being my inspiration and strength, and the nursing faculty for their support, guidance, and knowledge to prepare me to be the best nurse I can be. Audrey Hopkins. I want to thank my family and my fellow classmates for their endless support and helping me get through the nursing program. Stephanie Poole. Thank you so much to Mom, Dad, Meg, and my fellow nursing students for supporting me through this journey. Thank you to all the professors who made such a big difference. Kennedy Kamisha. I'd like to thank my family for all the support they've given me throughout my nursing school career and for being here with me for my pinning today. Kristen Kowalski. Thank you. I would like to say thank you to my mom, Dad and Marcus for being so supportive on every adventure I take you all on and allowing me to learn how to be your full-time advocate. Thank you to my babies who may not understand why mommy has been very busy these past two years, but I hope one day you will know most of this is for you and salute to the rest of the nursing class of 2021 and faculty, we did it. James Lamoureux. Thank you to my mother and father and my wonderful partner, Tara. Thank you to all the faculty that helped us through this and congratulations to my fellow nursing students. Zakisha Leith. Thank you to my mom, sister, and best friend for your support and encouragement throughout this journey. It means more than you know. I do not believe I would have made it without this. I do not believe I would have made it this far without all of you. <laughs> Sherry McDonald. I want, to thank, I want to thank my husband and my four children for supporting me in this journey 
and the sacrifices that came with it. It's all going to be worth it going forward. Thank you to my mom for being my biggest cheerleader and my rock through all of it. And thank you to my aunt and uncle for making it possible for my grandmother to be here today to celebrate this accomplishment with me. <laughs> Megan McIver. I'd like to thank all of my family and friends that have supported me through this journey. I couldn't have done it without all of the love and encouragement. Amanda Pelosi. I want to thank my entire family and my best friend, but I want to say a special thank you to my mom and Nana, who have believed in me and supported me throughout this crazy journey that was nursing school. I would not have been able to do this without my wonderful support system, and I want them to know how truly greatly I am for them. Jillian Peterson. Jill wants to thank Victor, Kay, and the rest of her family and friends for always supporting her and believing in her, even when she didn't believe in herself. She, al she also wants to thank Chase, Nicole, and Steph for never letting her give up and how grateful she is that this crazy journey allowed her to gain three lifelong best friends. Lastly, she'd like to thank all of her classmates for giving her a chance to prove that she's really nice, despite how angry her face always looks. <laughs> Shannon Smith. I would like to thank my family for their encouragement and support, and a special thank you to my son for motivating me and my mom, who has inspired me to follow in her footsteps and become a registered nurse. <laughs> Emily Toomey. I couldn't have made it here today without my amazing support system. I want to personally thank my sister, brother, boyfriend, and friends for believing in me, especially in the times that I felt defeated and when this achievement felt so far away. I'd also like to thank my late parents for, ma for making me the woman I am today. Jennifer Vazina. I would like to thank my parents for always helping me however they could and for being, the, being there for me no matter what. I would also like to thank my daughter, Brooke, who is my biggest motivation and reason why I'm, I am here today being pinned as a nurse. Congratulations to all of you. I would like to invite Megan McCrillis up to the podium to review the candle lighting and the nurse's pledge. All of the new nurses can stand up and grab your lamp. And just press down, turn on, and repeat with me. I solemnly pledge myself before God 
and in the presence of this assembly to practice my profession with integrity, honesty, and commitment. I will contribute to the betterment of my profession and by working to elevate the standards of nursing care by adding to the nurse's body of knowledge and del by delivering person-centered care. I will care for individuals, families, and groups with respect, advocating for them and maintaining their confidentiality. I will refrain from administering treatments that will cause harm. Through collaboration, inquiry, and pursuit of wisdom, I will endeavor to safeguard the health of those committed to my care. Congratulations. And now for the nurse's prayer, uh, nursing grad, Jamie Curvello. Thank you, Sherry. If everyone would open to the first page of their program, I invite you all to join me in a nurse's prayer. Give to my heart, Lord, compassion and understanding. Give to my mind knowledge and wisdom. Give to my hands skills and tenderness. Give to my eyes light to see those in need. Give to my ears the ability to listen. Give to my lips words of comfort. Give to my spirit the desire to share. Give to me, Lord, strength for this selfless service and enable me to give hope to those I am called to serve. Amen. And now, I have the honor to introduce our next speaker, who has been the voice for our class for the last two, and at times, incredibly challenging years. And she makes sure her voice is heard. <laughs> Not only has she advocated for each and every one of us in this program, but she also has become a lifelong friend and possesses all the incredible qualities every nurse should strive for. Thank you for everything you have done for us. So without further ado, our class president, Stephanie Langley. You're gonna have to give me a second to compose myself. <clears throat> Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Stephanie Langley, and I am humbled to introduce myself as the president of the graduating nursing class of 2021. I'd like to start by thanking QCC for allowing us to gather today. Dean Schmoll especially, thank you for advocating for our program and this pinning. I would also like to graciously thank the family and friends that are joining us today. It would not be the same if you were not here with us. And I know I speak for all of us when I say thank you for your support throughout these last two years. My dearest classmates, we earned this. As young, unknowing freshmen, we showed up to lab, looked at the health assessment breakdown, and I know I wasn't the only one thinking, what the heck did I just get myself into? I bribed y'all with muffins, and Dr. Brzee tried to soothe our stress with bowls of candy. We painstakingly learned fluid and electrolytes and celebrated passing our first semester with them too. We then moved to 105, where after just eight weeks of clinical, the world was shaken with COVID. With this came virtual lectures, clinicals, and testing, something new for all of us. We didn't think we would see the inside of a hospital again until we graduated. And with things being so unknown, we didn't even know if graduating was still a possibility. We thankfully entered 201 in the fall, as scheduled, and with real clinicals. Thank you to our faculty. Then, like it happened overnight, we wake up to our last semester. 202. I won't say much about 202 because I think we're all still healing a little. But what I will say is we persevered. This last semester solidified all of what we are doing here. It pushed most of us to the core of ourselves for strength and determination to keep going just a little bit longer. 
Throughout these last two years, despite all the attempts to keep us apart, that bond we created in 104 was just too strong. We still had our virtual study sessions, group conversations, and occasional get-togethers. We all just melded so well together, like we were handpicked. It has been said, the character of the nurse is as important as the knowledge they possess. I can look at each one of you and say that your character surpasses most. I have been inspired by so many of you <clears throat> and the adversities you have encountered and the resilience you, resilience you had in the face of all of it. All of you have undeniable compassion in your hearts, not only for nursing, but for life. We leave here today with all of the tools to sit for our NFLEX and face new uncertainties as an RN. Remember, all of your successes and all the things you've dreamed of are waiting for you just beyond that uncertainty. I challenge you to go out and embrace wholeheartedly the opportunities that may arise, despite what you believe to be your limits. I challenge you to challenge yourself, your character, and your integrity as a nurse when you are faced with situations that we know to be below acceptable. I urge you to continue to advocate for your patients like I've seen so many of you do in clinicals. Most importantly, I hope that you all continue to just be yourself. I will remember you all for the rest of my life. And just by being yourselves, I know you will make that imprint on the lives of the patients you touch going forward. I love you. Thank you for allowing me to be your president. guys can have a seat. Thank you. Excellent job, Stephanie. Nice reflection. We're also, our faculty is a little saddened to, to, with this information, but we would like to honor one of our teachers, uh, our faculty members that have been with the college for over 15 years. This is her last nursing class as she's planning on going on bigger and better things with her retirement. Jerry Russell, we want to say congratulations to you, and the class would like to give you some flowers. Jerry has seen many, many nursing classes graduate. Um, she actually taught our pediatrics course for Quinn Sigamond, and she did an outstanding job. Thank you, Jerry. Well, this concludes our nurse pinning ceremony. I want to thank you all for coming. This turned out better than we expected, um, and it's all because of you and the people that helped make this happen. Um, so we're going to leave the gym similarly to how we came in, one section at a time, and we're going to exit to the right. So thank you, everyone, and let's give one last round of applause for our grads. Place your candles under the chair.